Alexandria Taylor was the 2023 Mojo Arts poster artist. She's also a visual artist, a graphic designer, a muralist, and a model. I talk one-on-one -on -one with Miss Alexandra for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Alexandria Taylor, welcome yes. to Quentin's Close-Ups. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's my husband back here. Right uh, there. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, yes, yes. And congratulations to you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. I know that obviously you're becoming a household name here in the Low Country because you are the 2023 Mojo Poster Arts of Artists, obviously, with the featured painting Heritage. You're yes. also, of course, a visual artist, a muralist, a graphic yes. designer, and a model. Let me ask you this, Ms. Alexandria. How would you craft your life right now? using art? Ooh, um, I would say my, the way my ideal life would look right now using art, I, I think honestly the kind of what it is right now, you know, um, I'm doing everything that I want to do, everything that I enjoy. And I'm happy to still have things to strive for because I definitely don't feel like I'm in the place that I want to be at, but I'm excited about the journey and continuing to get there. Um, the only set thing I would say that I wish was different right now is that my art was making more money, <laughs> but, um, I'm in a really great situation with my artist residency. And, um, so I'm just trying to enjoy creating right now. What do you hope to strive for from an artistic standpoint? I would love to be more of a household name. I don't necessarily need fame as an artist, but I would love to have like set collectors, you know, who are waiting on my next piece. I would love to have, a, I would love to have a licensing deal with Target. To, like they have like the notebooks and the office supplies and the artwork and stuff. I would love to create a collection for Target. And um, just to be able to continue to create full time as an artist, my artist residency is up in less than a year, but I would love to have like a permanent art studio and eventually start a nonprofit that focuses on the arts and creativity and giving people the tools to follow their own dreams. Hmm. What tools did you have to follow your particular dream as Alexandra? I had a very supportive family, still do. Um, and honestly, the just gifts and talents that God gave me. Um, ever since I was a little girl, there was nothing else that I wanted to be aside from an artist, like literally nothing. I decided for, as a child, when I grow up, I want to be an artist. So here I am growing up and I'm an artist. Um, and I, I would say the biggest component is just having support of a supportive family who put me in art classes, who put me in summer camps or whatever that focused on the arts, bought me art supplies every time I wanted it, supported every little venture or idea that I had. And I know everybody doesn't get that, right? Like I know the arts are underfunded in the educational system. Um, there's a focus on other things, which is important, right? But we can't, there, there are kids who are growing up and they're not supposed to be scientists. They're not supposed to be mathematicians. They're not supposed to be lawyers and doctors. Some of these people are supposed to grow up and be artists. Um, and so I had that support. I had that encouragement, even though sometimes along the way, people told me that's not a great idea. It's not profitable, whatever. Um, it has its ebbs and flows and its ups and downs, but it's what my soul needs to be alive. I have to create. I have to do it. Yes, ma'am. So what exactly are the ebbs and flows when it comes to art? Yeah. So there's, I'm, I'm in one of the ebbs and flows right now. There's some times when it's like really, really great and I'm making a lot of sales and I'll make like a lot of money, like at one time. And you know, it's exciting. It's like, Oh my, you know, one of the first times I sold a painting for a couple hundred dollars, I was like, oh, I didn't know I could make this much money. <laughs> you know, I didn't know I could make money off of art and that it could really sustain me so there's times when it's like that and then there's times like now where it's kind of slow mm -hmm. and you know as an artist you might need to pick up another part-time job or whatever you know I've quit my job several times in my artist career like oh well art is more demanding right now I'm doing more paint parties I'm doing more commissions I'm going to step away from this job and focus on art and then there's other times where I've had to go back to working a job I also have a degree in graphic design so that does help um, I always had that option to go back to, uh, so 
Yeah, it's ebbs and flows. Um, I would say just like to other artists, try not to get discouraged by that. That's something I'm actively working through now because you have a gift. I have a gift and um, it's important. Oh, absolutely. So, Miss Alexandra, let me ask you this, Dan. What does art mean to you? I think that art is the heartbeat of society. You could look at any artist in history and kind of understand the tone of what was going on around that time or the mentality of people, even just that one specific art artist. So I think artists have a responsibility to be vulnerable because we are the people that reflect each other. We reflect society. So how exactly are you vulnerable with your art? Um, I am working on getting more vulnerable. <laughs> it is definitely a journey because... Um, there's already a, a vulnerability in creating art and putting something that is like bearing your soul to the public and showing them and say, okay, now judge me. <laughs> um, and if people don't buy my work, it's like, so you don't hate my art, you hate me. And, <laughs> but I think there's, um, also a level of vulnerability I'm getting into with my emotions and things that I've gone through, things that have happened in my personal life that is becoming more reflected in my artwork as I grow as an artist. So that's something I'm excited about too. Well, uh, let me ask you this, Dan, Ms. Alexandra. What set of emotions have has art actually triggered in you? I wouldn't say. Um, so I do get, I, I do feel emotions when I look at other people's art, and, and and emotions conveyed in my artwork that I emote. Most of it is positive and, and happy and stuff. But you know, lately I've been getting into things that. You know, I have some work that I haven't, I don't really share a whole lot, but it's very angry. It's very sad. Um, I have a self-portrait that I did before my freshman year of college that also connects with people because I was in a kind of depressing state when I painted that. And so the pieces that I painted when I'm any emotive state that I'm in, any, I'm not even necessarily trying to convey a certain emotion sometimes, but people can easily read the the emotion that's reflected in the artwork you know and so as a person if you're around me in person it's very hard for me to hide my emotions if i'm happy i'm like woo. if i'm upset it's clear i'm bubbly if i'm sad i can't hide it and so that really speaks through my artwork heavily heavily so well let me ask you this then how does your art actually connect with the people that you are around and the people that you're trying to reach yeah i would say in two ways so number one um, I think it connects specifically to empower black people and women. Um, people get a strong sense of just like empowerment through it. When they look at my work, which, you know, generally is about black women and black people and stuff. So they get that sense from it. But also people also tell me that they get the sense of emotion through it. They can connect through emotion. So earlier when I spoke about art being the heartbeat of society, you know, it's like speaking a language that you, you don't necessarily have the words for, but you can see it and it translates into feelings. Um, and so I think that's what my art brings as well. This might be a silly question, Ms. Alexandra, but how and when did art become your love language? Ooh, it's not a silly question. I don't think it's ever not been my love language. I, I mean, I can't remember a time that I wasn't drawing on something, you know? It's just always, always, always been a part of who I am. Yeah. Wow. So, obviously, now that you've been a Mojo Arts poster artist, and I'm hoping that you'll get back there next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah, that'd be awesome. You're a visual artist, you're you know, muralist, you're a graphic designer, you're a wife, and obviously you're active in the community. So who are you with all of these titles and all of these accomplishments in your life now? That's deep. <laughs> I um I'm just a girl. <laughs> um I I'm just Alex. I'm just out here doing the best I can and trying to be a good member of society. I'm just somebody that wants to hopefully by doing the best that I can do with what I have and the gifts that God gave me to inspire other people to do the same and to just be good people to yourselves and other people and share positive, beautiful things in the world just to make a better place. What do you want to share that's positive now through your art? Mm -hmm. Um, 
I want to share the importance of vulnerability. I think especially since COVID, a lot of people have a sense of loneliness and um, feeling isolated, not only physically, but like mentally and emotionally. I would say vulnerability helps people feel a little less alone. Maybe that you have some people who are experiencing the same things and, and that you can get through it, you know, that it's not the end of the world, but that um, hard things are um, possible to get through. And it's even more possible to get through those hard things when you have a community of people with you. How does th this society today actually view art in your mind? I think um, looking at it from a financial aspect, I see that art uh, is being underfunded in schools and the education system and, and, and even like in our country. Um, so from that aspect, maybe not as valuable, but then I also see like there's like right now, just like in my generation and community, there is a resurgence of an appreciation for the arts and appreciation for self-care and self and poetry and, and expressing yourself. So I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I feel like it is appreciated. I definitely feel appreciated as an artist, but I do feel like there are could be more financial backing, um, maybe publicly, you know, maybe more things available, but I see that there is more things coming available. So I think we're in a good place. It could be better, but I think it's a good place right now. So uh, this might not be a relevant question, but let me ask you, Ms. Uh, Alexandra, how have you been able to challenge those preconceived notions and stereotypes about art through your art? Um... I hope this answers your question. I have always focused on painting things that uplift the black community, right? That's what I generally say when people ask me. But then sometimes people have asked me like, well, why do you only paint like this topic? Why don't you paint more? Like, why don't you paint white people? Why don't you paint this? Why don't you paint the bridge? Why don't you paint animals? Why don't you paint dogs? I feel like people don't ask um white artists those kinds of questions when they paint a certain kind of thing all the time and I feel like um because of the subjects I paint sometimes it puts me in a box because people feel like my black my art is just like black artwork or it's just afrocentric artwork but at the root of my art is my experiences and my life and my history and my heritage and so I, I'm not saying that I'm not just a black artist, but I also am an artist who should be valued for the things that I create and not put in a box because it's quote unquote, just black art, right? Like it should be valued by any and everybody because I'm an artist who's painting about my life. So Ms. Alexandria, then let me ask you, how exactly is your art being valued today? Um, I would say I have a lot of great supporters. And people who have said my names in rooms that I'm not even in, um, people who have uplifted me and my artwork, and people who have supported my artwork by purchasing it, buying it, sharing it, um, even if they can't afford to purchase it, like they give me some encouraging words. I feel like I am fully supported and bolstered as an artist, and I appreciate my community that supports me. Yes, ma'am. So let me ask you. Um how has your art actually allowed you to venture into new ideas in, for the future? So right now, I actually feel like I am in a place of transformation mm -hmm. um, as far as my art and just continuing to grow as an artist. Literally, I'm in like kind of like a creative flurry and I really want to be in my art studio right now, but I have to do some work. <laughs> um, but just pushing my creative bounds and also releasing myself from um, the limitations of like, if I paint this, like hopefully this it'll sell, you know, hopefully I can make some money off of this. And honestly, just kind of forgetting about that and getting back to creating just for the sake of it. Um, and so I have a lot of ideas right now. I want to get back into the studio. You know, if anybody wants to donate art supplies, that'd be awesome. <laughs> but I am super excited for where I'm going creatively, create creatively, like right now. Right now. So you talk about right now, Ms. Alexandra. So what are those creative bounds that you have in mind? So the things that I feel like are blocking me lately is just like the pressure of, you know, I'm, I'm at 
a, a, a crossroads in my life. Not necessarily a crossroads, but I'm about to be 30 next year. Uh-huh. You know, I, I, I've always, and maybe other people can resonate with this. I feel like you're supposed to do something great before you hit a certain age, right? Like I'm supposed to be already doing the great things that I've been talking about doing my entire life. And it's like I'm about to be 30 and not saying 30 is the end of the world. It's definitely not because 30 is definitely fly. It's a real cute age. Okay, girls in their 30s, they definitely it right now. But the mentality, trying to get out of that mentality is has been difficult for me. And then also feeling like art ha- is supposed to be completely sustaining me right now. Like, like when I spoke about it ebbs and flows, it really does. And sometimes that can be discouraging. Um, having like, I need to be, I need to be able to create work that will sell. Right. I think that's a limitation. So now like actively I am working on tearing those mental blockers down. And I feel like it's opening me up to just like the freedom to create without those, um, without those pressures. So now what do you want to actually create? I want to create artwork that um, not just speaks to me and who I am and my history and my heritage. Cause I'm also, um, my mom is from the Caribbean, you know, I want and my dad, he's, you know, full blooded American. And so like, I have two cultures inside of me. Um, I want to speak to that, but I also want to speak to things that are important to me, you know, like the, not just the upliftment of women, but maybe get a little bit deeper into like the intricacies of growing as a woman, as a black woman and, and, and delving a little bit deeper into those things. Um, and then just some things that are going on in my personal life. Like I love to do abstract work. I may not paint exactly what's going on, but I want to continue to convey the feelings and emotions and, and how I can transcribe that through art visually. And when you are in the art studio, Ms. Alexandra, who are you as an artist? Mm, I'm just me. I'm just a person doing what they're supposed to do and hopefully being inspired by God along the way. Um, I'm just someone using their gift, you know? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. So the last question for you, Ms. Alexandria, is this. How equitable and sustainable will your art be in the next five to ten years? Oh, it's going to be bomb. It's going to be worth it. So if you want to go ahead and invest and get some artwork now, you're going to catch it while you can. <laughs> you're going to catch it while you can. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and speaking of which, how can we get in contact if, if, with you if you want to purchase one of your paintings? For sure. So um, all of my platforms have the same name. My website is www.morowa.com. That's Moro Mose. It's the same on Instagram, um, Facebook, and TikTok at M-O-R-O-W-A, M-O-S-A-I. And you can find me on all those things. Follow me on Instagram. I post all kinds of stuff on there. Oh, yes. I've seen a lot of those. It's very impressive. Thank you. So, oh, you're welcome. So which one of your paintings is actually your portal, Ms. Alexandra? My portal. So what do you mean? Like portal to my soul, portal to who I am? Yeah, what, let me ask you in a better way. Which painting actually describes you the best? Um, I would say there's the self-portrait that I did in before I went to college. It's called Identity Crisis. Mm-hmm. And it's like half of the face is missing. And I feel like sometimes I struggle with imposter syndrome a lot. And, um, but it, it, there's that, but then there's also some of my abstract pieces that are just, there's one piece called pieces of me and it looks very happy. The the colors are happy, but it's different pieces of body parts kind of it looks Picasso-esque. Picasso stole his style from Africans, um, the African style of artwork. But anyway, I'm moving on. It's it's reminiscent of that. That's what people say when they think of it. So I think it's a mixture of the two because I did that one years, I think, before my artist career really took off, the self-portrait. And then I did pieces of me very recently. And um, I think in a way that's a self-portrait. So yeah, I'm not saying I'm an artist in turmoil, but I am I think I would say more I'm an artist that is, is changing in um what's what's it called when a butterfly is in chrysalis and oh, yes. it, it becomes a butterfly i'm in that process and i don't know when i'll become the butterfly yes. <laughs> I'm yes. in that process oh absolutely yes ma'am well alexandria taylor thank you so much for your time and again welcome to quintense close-ups thank you so much for having me oh you're welcome <laughs>